Okay, so we know it runs. Everything's bolted in place. We're not moving anything to do with that. So uh, we're onto the cab. We're gonna put the cab back on it again. Now, last time we massaged the firewall a little bit and that looks a little bit crappy. So we're just gonna cut this section out for now uh, because we move the engine farther back and then bolt the cab down in place and then mount the intercooler, radiator, all the piping, all the plumbing for this um, as it is. We're gonna pull all the wiring back off again because we don't need that. And we've simplified that threefold by using a Holly setup. So lots to do. Let's get into it. Here we go. back in place, get the exhaust figured out, get the uh, drive shaft figured out. Next thing to do is add this to the mix. Once the radiator is mounted properly, then we can do the intercooler, the AC condenser, power steering cooler, and transmission cooler. That should all fit, no problems. Clear. It's now that I cut a big giant hole in the back and actually that's going to work out really slick. All the F550 stuff from the 2010 will go nicely right up above the floor and the hump. The hump is in the perfect height right now, super happy with that. I had to take the bracket off for my fuel that I made and I'll have to tweak that a little bit. We'll pull the grill out, cut the rad support. I still have to manufacture a puck for underneath here yet. And then uh, we can cut this and mount our big uh, flex light radiator. Then once we have that, we can mount the intercooler and I gotta figure out the transmission cooler before we get too much farther. And this is unheard of for a Cummins swap or a diesel swap or anything. Look what we got. We got this, this shaft that connects the transfer case to the front axle and that you don't see that. That's always Bluetooth. I have not driven in a project truck yet that actually has the front drive shaft in it. So we actually have a four wheel drive Caterpillar Swap F350. We got some custom badges for it. Mm. Oh, perfect. We're making a lot of headway and very, very happy with the progress and fully knowing that everything's gonna work. There's always that, will it fit? How am I gonna do this? I think we got room for a transmission cooler and everything. So, um, only a couple more videos, boys, and we will be driving it under its own power. So you gotta stick around for that. Here we go. down below there that's an issue knock the bottom of the tank off and we could build, we're gonna definitely gonna build a skid plate there but I do have lots of room here yet um, if we really had to we can cut into the back of the grill I don't really want to but I've got five inches from here to here and I only need three for the intercooler and the intercooler is only about this high so that leaves room for the transmission cooler and the power steering cooler underneath that yet so we're gonna go up I'm gonna cut the rad support out here all the way along and I'm actually gonna stick it up into the hood a little bit. So I'm gonna just cut right behind the support right for the latch and then make this rather than go on an angle, I'm gonna make it do a 90 and then stick the rad up into 
here just a bit that will bring this up um, nicely this high and that will make it nicely parallel with this we'll make this a 90 coming straight out and then um, we'll do a really nice jog over and in and then this coolant pipe will be perfect you want the rad higher than the top of the coolant in the um, cylinder head otherwise you run risk of always having air stuck in the cylinder head and that will lead to hot spots and whatnot so it'll look a little goofy right now um, but we'll clean it up we'll paint it all nice and nobody will ever know so here we go okay this is the exact spot that i want it uh perfect height come across, go over the belt, hit my uh, top water jacket. Bottom one nicely goes underneath the mount uh, for the front of the engine and then can come up and hit the water pump. So now, um, some angle iron to come straight down from here. This is still nice and strong. Um, braced it nice and strong here. So we'll come down with angle iron and then come over. Um, we'll drill a three quarter inch hole in here to have with a rubber mount, that'll hold it up. And then the angle iron will come down go across and then I'll do a brace along the bottom and connect it to. We were talking to um, OBS Solutions and we asked if they would box the frame. Damn it, you had to be on video for this? <laughs> we talked about this off air. I know. I, thought... I mean, like, it's up to you, bud. You've seen a pile of these come through the shop. Dude, we're here in Oregon in the valley. These trucks are everywhere. We see them with like 400K still going, frames intact. They haul everything from your camper to, you know, excavators and stuff. To being used in the bush. You guys got a yeah. lot of logging and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. And, and they, none of them are cracked? I rarely see uh, crack frames, but like I told you, it's all in the, who the idiot is behind the wheel, right? right? Because these trucks have so much flex in the frame that keeps them alive from breaking. I know there's going to be people that are like, hey, I've seen frames break. Yeah, there's yeah, always yeah, those, yeah. right? And right. We, like we talked about, we've seen cross member rivets break out. I've yep. seen that, yep. seen them stretch and break there. But as for the frame rails themselves, I don't claim to be know everything, but yeah. I'm, I haven't seen it yet. It, okay. I'm sure there's a guy jumping it and it breaks. And yeah, I think because we're staying on the road and it uh, it's not gonna be crazy. I think it's a lot easier if I don't box it. The bumper is actually structural. Um, it actually keeps the front from spreading out. We've cured that with our front mount. We've welded them together. I am gonna weld this little piece in between here, but we're going to take the structural bumper off and put the 2010 bumper on. It's a little bit higher. That will cover up more of the bottom of the radiator. Um, and I like the look of that. Um, the other bumper is like three three inches lower. So we'll have a bunch of radiators sticking out underneath the, the bumper and that doesn't look good. So, um, cut those pieces, weld them in place, and then we can get rid of the full front assembly here. Once the radiator is mounted properly, then we can do the intercooler, the AC condenser, power steering cooler, and transmission cooler. That should all fit, no problems, no problems. Here we go. Okay, so uh, this was like a tinny uh, rad support, and we'll definitely bend uh, or weld and bend a, a piece that goes beside here and then also on the inside where I notch so it's nice and strong. We can do that when the cab is off and the radiator's out. For now we're just tacking stuff together um, just so that we know where stuff goes. And this is my custom bracket for um, this side. So nice and strong, as strong as we can possibly make it I guess. Um, and weld that right beside it like that. Leave a little bit of a gap for a rubber. Um, notched for the bolt there, if you can see that, just slightly. Um, and then we'll weld the brace on underneath. But we're gonna build it nice and strong. So, here we go. I think what makes the most sense actually is to cut this straight up and then continue the angle iron and stick that underneath this bracket here. That'll give it some more rigidity that way. Um, we want it nice and strong here because the intercooler is gonna go right up underneath. Um, the issue is that the bracket uh, goes right to the end and we need the bracket to sit right about here. So we'll just cut those off and then call Vince. 
And you can roll them back on in the proper spot. All right, so nicely stopped raining. We've got a nice AC condenser. The top line's a little smushed, but that's, we're gonna actually open that up and then what happened there, but the rest of it is okay. You can see the tubes are okay. And we got a nice transmission cooler here, a nice big one. Um, we use one for the power steering and we'll order another one to uh, get the uh, power steering and the other one transmission there. So, I think this was the power steering for the for the Ford, but we'll just use two of these. They'll stack up really nice. There we go. All right, so we're making headway and trying to plan everything out as we go. And I know sometimes I talk uh, a lot, but I want you guys to uh, be kind of in the same train of thought so that you don't just slam stuff together, but you're thinking as you're working. Um, biggest thing is how are you going to work on it after um, it's all together. Can we get certain stuff off without having to disassemble the entire thing? Even though it's super tight, we can take our fans off. They're nicely just bolted right on the top so we can slide that up and over. We're gonna cut the, the front of this uh, fan hub off yet and we should have enough room to be able to take the radiator off. But if we have to do any major work to the front of the engine, say we goofed something up and we need to get at that, um, the only way to do that is through the front. Things like the AC condenser, we'd want to put our flexible lines right here so that if we were working on it, we can swing the AC condenser out of the way without having to drain the system and, and recharge it afterwards. We now have our radiator, then our intercooler, then our AC condenser, and then this will be our transmission cooler. Um, the bumper is right here. Uh, we're gonna go with the 2010. That has uh, more airflow coming through. There's a big hole in the front where you can see. So the transmission's gonna get a pile of air and that's our biggest issue with it. I'm not worried about the uh, cat getting hot. I'm worried about the Allison getting hot, doing a lot of work. Um, so this one's up higher and then we'll put the power steering cooler underneath. The power steering cooler will be somewhat sacrificial. Um, we're still gonna put uh, a skid plate underneath to deflect any dogs or raccoons. It's gonna be a tall raccoon if we hit that. But this is our long haul uh, truck highway driving tired because we're gonna to go to a race or coming back from somewhere or trying to put miles under our belt. If we were to hit something, we wanna kind of account for that and make sure that it's strong enough to be able to deflect something underneath um, because if we were to damage the radiator, we're stuck. We can't just order another one because it's such a unique swap. So um, keeping that in mind, it's, it's worth planned for the worst, hope for the best. Um, but yeah, that's where we're, we're at right now. Um, I, I wanna find a longer skinnier power steering cooler, so we'll probably head to Tuesdays in the morning for that. And we're gonna continue mounting um, all of our coolers solid, but I need Vince, he's coming tomorrow. So I'm tacking the rest of the intercooler piping together, and then um, we can go from there. A couple things we have to fabricate. Uh, this aluminum housing went straight up, and we need it to come straight out, so it will, the upper rad hose will come nicely around and come to the top here. It would have been nicer if the intercooler pipe came out right here at the top, but I don't think that's possible. Um, one little 45 coming up and going in here, it's not a big deal. When we made our custom intake, a lot of you guys mentioned that we didn't have a uh, grid heater or a, a sandwich heater for um, cold starts. I already thought about that beforehand. Got Oshkut to cut me the flange for um, a Dodge grid heater and just drilled the holes with his laser. Uh, I'll make them a little bigger and tap them. I'll get Vince to weld this in place. So then I can bolt a Cummins grid heater right in line and still have my cold start capabilities. Um, thanks for your comment too. I was worried that it didn't start quick enough after it initially had it running the second time. It still cranked over for a good 10 seconds before it caught. And somebody said, don't worry about that. You gotta get it up to temperature, get all the bubbles out of the oil and, and bleed everything 100%. So um, once you do that, then it should start quicker. The issue is that the oil is firing the injectors and we're asking it to go through this entire filter before it fires the injectors. That being said, oil is not compressible. So um, the second we have pressure, it should transfer through. I expected the delay to be a second or second and a half, no more than that. So we'll see about that when we uh, when we start running it down the road. 
Okay, with the VNR, grabbed a bunch of intercooler piping. Between all of that, I should make something that fits just perfect here. We can buy online kits that have 90s and 45s, but they don't have these neat little swiggles that aren't quite 40. They're like 35. They're like a little bent and twisted and snapped in half. And you can't you can't buy that online. You have to you have to go to scrapyards. Vince is gonna love it. Man, this thing is well so nice. Welds as nice as 30 year old oil saturated aluminum. Here we go. Everything's coming together nicely. Um, this is the pipe for the intercooler that's gonna make the intake go farther back. So I need to put the grid heater almost right up to the intake here, which is perfect. Although in my infinite wisdom, I made a mistake. Um, I had Oshkut make these, and only because these are also risers for our dual plenum P-pump compound turbo Cummins 24 valve. And I should have made this a three inch circle, not a square. It'll be all right here because it's gonna be kind of oblong because we're gonna start coming into this corner here. So this one will still work out fine. But if I want it to look nice, Vince, Vince is gonna, Vince is gonna leave me if I tell him he's gotta fill these gaps. <laughs> nice thing about Oshkut is uh, with the Fusion 360, uh, you can have the file for on the outside, make it just a three inch circle on the inside, and Oshkut, honestly, they deliver almost overnight. They're in Utah, we're in Canada, and I, they still managed to overnight me the pieces for the compound turbo. Um, so if you're in the States, uh, they are so quick. Um, it's worth not welding this right now, waiting for the parts because it'll be a day or two. We're trying to make the builds, elevate our builds a little bit and having a round hole rather than a big giant sloppy square hole, it's gonna make sense. So we're gonna get Vince to weld those in the morning. Very, very excited, here we go. Okay, so that is about the end of it. I gotta make a couple more brackets in the front, just small stuff to hold everything in place, but that's generally the design. We're gonna take everything apart again, clean everything, paint all the pipes in the intake, everything black. Still have to weld in that intake, um, all that little stuff, but you get the idea that we are moving forward in leaps and bounds now. Next video, firewall. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich, get out there and work on it. Here we go.